So this morning, we want to thank all of our veterans who have served our amazing country. Please join us as we salute our veterans and do our pledges to our flags. Please join me as I say the pledge to the American flag. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And would you please join me as we salute the Christian flag? Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one brotherhood uniting all Christians in service and love. Join me this morning as we pledge allegiance to God's holy word. Attention, salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word, and will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God.
This morning, if you'll take God's precious word and be finding an Old Testament book that we call 1 Samuel. It is the narrative of the life of David. And this morning's message is certainly a timely message today. The title of the message today is Endeavor to Encourage. Regardless of who you are, everybody needs a dose of encouragement. We all need encouragement. And right here in 1 Samuel chapter 30, we even learn that King David needed to encourage himself. So do you have God's word open to 1 Samuel chapter 30, beginning with verse number one? Let's read together God's holy word and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts this morning. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 1, And it came to pass, when David and his 600 men were come to Ziklag. Ziklag was the home away from home for David. On the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag had been smitten and burned with fire. And had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Verse 3, so David and his men came to the city, Ziklag, and behold, it was burned with fire. Can you smell the fire? And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept, watch this carefully, until they had no more power to weep. Verse 5, and David's two wives were taken captives. Now verse 6, pay close attention. 
The Bible says that David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. That word can also mean bitter. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. Now watch this in verse 6. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Do you see that? But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. I read a beautiful story about a brother and sister. They were out on a climb on a mountain. And the climb was not an easy climb. It was rather a rocky and bumpy climb. And the sister said to the brother, this is not at all the right path. Isn't there a better path that we could follow? This one is all rocky and bumpy. And the brother said, no, this is the right path. For you see, all the rocks that are on our path are to help us in our step that we may climb higher and higher and higher. Did you hear that? The rocks along the path helped the brother and sister find their path better as they climbed the mountain. You know, in these uncertain and unusual days that we all are experiencing, we could truly say in our hearts that we are going through some bumpy and rocky days in all of our life. I want to ask you a question this morning. How do you bounce back from tragedy? How do you bounce back from tragedy? Have you ever ex experienced any tragedy? Well, I think if we're all honest with each other, we all have experienced some degree of tragedy in all of our life. You know, just because we're believers in Jesus Christ does not immune us or exempt us from tragedy. But tragedy, like the brother and sister, tragedy can be, if we'll view it from a biblical perspective, tragedy can be a stepping stone for us to grow closer with the Lord. Now this morning, I want to share with you three biblical actions to grasp, to embrace in your spirit when you go through a tragedy and learning how to encourage yourself. Number one, and that is reflect on the situation. You see it there on the screen, reflect on the situation. Write that down, tuck that in your heart reflect on that situation. Now, to carefully understand 1 Samuel chapter 30, you have to carefully go back to 1 Samuel chapter 29 to understand 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 1 says, and it came to pass. You must go back and read 1 Samuel 29. David the last king of Israel did the unthinkable, the unreasonable. He aligned himself of all people with the Philistines. David had 600 men that left Ziklag, that city that was home away from home. They left Ziklag. They went a three-day journey to the Philistines and tried to unite with the Philistines and said, let us build a bond together and go and do war. And you know what the Philistines said? Not for one minute. Not for one second. Well, David and his 600 men, they were deflated. They were discouraged. Well, David shouldn't have been there. David should, in no circumstance, ever should have aligned himself with the Philistines. But while they were gone for these three days, the Amalekites, as you know, as they say, when the cats away, the mice will play. Three days, the Amalekites said, David and his 600 men are gone. Let's go and invade 
Ziklag is exactly what they did. Basically, as I can say it, Ziklag was ransacked. And so here was David and his 600 men. They come back to Ziklag and all the wives, all the daughters, all the sons, all the children, all the family, they were gone. The Amalekites had taken all the people and they had gone back home. Now, what do you do when you know you shouldn't have done it? How do you bounce back from an experience that you know you shouldn't have been there, you shouldn't have gone? What do you do? Well, first of all, the situation that David found himself in was very disturbing. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 30, verse 1, Ziklag was burned with fire. I mean, it was devastated. There was nothing left but rubble. These Amalekites, they had completely destroyed, they had completely ransacked Ziklag. I mean, it was disturbing. Not only that, it was deplorable. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 2. The Bible says, The awful Amalekites had taken the soldiers' wives and their children. David and his 600 men, they were stunned. They were startled. I mean, it was deplorable. Imagine coming back and finding your family gone. What do you do? But also we find the situation was devastating. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 4, the Bible says that David and his soldiers had wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you been there? Have you ever felt like David? I've cried where I can't cry anymore. I have well to where I cannot weep anymore. These men and David, they were completely devastated. What in the world do you do in a predicament like that? So ladies and gentlemen, some of the stories in the Bible, I often wonder from time to time, why are they in there? Why are stories in the Bible in there that are so devastating, that are so deplorable? Why are they in there for this very fact? So that we can learn as David bounced back from tragedy, so can we. And it also teaches us that as David, who was a follower of God, found himself in a deplorable situation. We will find ourselves in that situation, but there is hope. And so the first action that we must do is reflect on the situation. Ask ourselves, why are we there? What did we do to find ourselves in this situation? The second thing that we must learn or we must embrace to encourage ourselves is, and that is remember the solution. There it is on the screen. Write it down. Remember the solution. As you follow this heartbreaking dilemma, David remember who and what he must do regardless of this impending conflict. Now observe the careful actions that David followed through in his heartache. Number one, David paused to reassure himself. Listen to 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. That also can be translated, David strengthened himself in the Lord. David found himself with no one to turn to but the Lord. Here's the lesson. May we, like David, let God be our first source of hope. Why, Pastor? Because People will fail you. Programs will fail you. Programs will fail you. But God never fails. I wish I could say that 10,000 times. God never fails. You say, but pastor, no, take that away. But pastor, no, take that away. People will fail you. Programs will fail you. But God never fails fails. And friend, this is what David did. He went to the Lord and encouraged himself. David also prayed to recover himself. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 7, don't miss this. 
David said to Abiathar, the priest, David said to Abiathar, bring me hither the ephod. Now, what is the ephod? Well, to us today, I may not have much significance, but in the Old Testament, the, a the ephod represented the very presence of God. The ephod is what the high priest wore, and it represented the 12 tribes of Israel. But more importantly, it represented the very presence of God. You see, David said, bring me the ephod that I may feel the nearness of God in my spirit. Here's the lesson. When we are in desperate times, do you know what we need near to our heart? And that's the presence of God. We find that in God's Word. Bring me the Bible. Bring me the church. Bring me a special song. Bring me the season of prayer. Friend, let me tell you, all the things around us in this world They'll only help you for a season, and they'll quickly fade away. There is nothing that can, that can compare the, to the very presence of God in your life. This is David. What did he do? He, he strengthened himself in the Lord. He said, bring me the ephod that I may find hope in the Lord. And then look at 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8. The Bible said, David inquired of the Lord. You know what that means? David said, Lord, what do I do? Now remember, David had 600 men. David could have said, and we would have understood, all right, I want all of you 600 men to come and sit around me. I want to ask you, what do you think we ought to do? Listen very carefully. I mean this lovingly. He probably would have received 600 different answers. But you know what he said? The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, 7, and 8, he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Friend, in times that we're facing right now, and maybe something that you are encountering right now in your life, it's great to ask friends. And I believe in that, Christian friends, yes. But you know what? We need to look up. And we need to say with all sincerity in our hearts, Lord, what would you have me do? Now, by me saying that, listen very carefully, because David strengthened himself in the Lord, because David asked for the ephod, and because David asked the Lord, what, Lord, would you have me do? Listen carefully. The Lord gave him a plan. So how do I encourage myself? You reflect on the situation. Why am I here? Number two, you remember the solution. What was the solution? Bring the ephod. Bring the presence of the Lord. Ask the Lord, what would you have me do? But number three, listen very carefully. Here it comes. Regroup to strike. Now, friends, when we have experienced tragedy, we can sit, soak, and be sour. Or we can get up and we can mobilize our faith and our life and be where God wants us to be. Now, remember, friends, let me say this lovingly. Do you know that God has a very high success rate with people? If they'll only turn their problems over to Him, all through the Bible, from Genesis to Malachi, from Matthew to the book of Revelation, God has not lost one single battle. I have read, and you have too, where people have turned their problems over to God, and what has God done? God has brought victory after victory after victory, and this is what God would do for David. And so David had to regroup to go and strike the Amalekites. So, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you, don't retreat from your problems. Don't retaliate, retaliate uh, with a sense of vengeance. But rather ask the Lord, what would you have me do? Now let's look how David 
regrouped his 600 men. The first thing that David did was he immediately began to look for results. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 8, the Bible says, And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Listen carefully, shall I pursue after the troop? That's the Amalekites. Shall I overtake them? Watch this. And the Lord answered David in one word. And you know what that one word was? Pursue. Say that with me. Pursue. You know what that means? Go get them. Go get them. Basically, we would say, go get your family, your children. Go take back what the devil stole from you. And friend, we need to do that right now. I mean, we need to look the devil square in the face. And we need to say, devil, hands off. Hands off in the name of Jesus. I speak power over what you've taken, and the Lord is going to give back to me what I allowed you to take. That's what David did. Secondly, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 9, the Bible says, And they came to the brook of Bezor. Now, here's a beautiful history lesson. Here is David and his 600 men. They came to the brook of Bezor. Now, when you go back and read your Bible, you'll know that the brook Bezor was more than a brook. It was a deep running river. Now, the men had traveled from Ziglag to Bezor is 13 miles. A friend were going by foot. And David is in a, in his a, it's a hastily trip. Some of the men are very tired. They're weary and they're worn out. They come to this brook. And the brook is so deep. And the brook is running swiftly. That some of the men are just so tired. They cannot cross this brook. So when you read your Bible, you discover that 200 of the soldiers stayed behind. They just couldn't do it. So 400 of the soldiers along with David went on. Now stop right there listen to me. Do you know that when God says pursue, the devil will put everything in, his, in your way to keep you from reclaiming what belongs to you. That little brook, Bezor, was the last thing standing in the way between David and now those 400 men. Friend, listen to me lovingly. Listen to me. If you are attempting to take back what the devil stole from you, mark it down straight. The devil will throw this, he'll do this, he'll throw this, he'll throw this to do everything to make you retreat and go back to Ziklag. I am calling on you this morning. If you are facing the brook Bezor, swim through. Swim through. You say, Pastor, it's tough and it's hard and I'm tired and I'm weary. Hey, friends, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Friend, let God have your desire. Swim that brook. And when you get to the other side, guess what? There is victory waiting for you. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? The other day, I was at home and I was getting ready to have lunch. And the chips that I was going to have with my sandwich, I take a little uh, clothespin like this and I take it and I put it on the chips that I normally have for lunch. As I got my chips and I took the uh, clip off, the clip popped, it, 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 it broke. And I reached down on the floor and I picked the clip up and I saw it broken. And what really happened was that the spring had come apart. And so as I looked at it and I thought, okay, I tried my best 
to put it back together. And you know that the spring is so tight on this clip. But after a little effort, I was able to put the little spring back on the clip. And after my lunch, I was able to put the clip back on my chips. It reminded me in all of our lives, sometimes our spring in our life just breaks. For whatever reason, it just pops. And so what do we do? Well, with God's grace, you take that spring and you repair it. Friend, I don't know where you are this morning, but I can tell you, friends, God can put the spring back in your clip again. He can take whatever's broken. He can take whatever you've lost. He can take whatever is in your life right now that's so devastating. And by the power of the very name of Jesus, he can put the spring back in your step, back in your countenance, back in your heart. You say, Pastor, can God do that for me? Friend, he can do that for anybody. Maybe this morning you're watching and you're saying, Pastor Sam, I know not Christ. I've never asked Christ to come into my heart. And Pastor, I need the Lord to repair my spring. Will he do that for me? He's just waiting. What's he waiting on, Pastor? For you to call upon him. Call upon him. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Friend, if you're lost, I beg of you to give your heart to Christ. And to those who know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I think we can all say together that at one time or another in our life, or maybe even this morning, you could say, Pastor Sam, I'm right where you are. Something has taken my spring away. Pastor, what do I do? Friend, you do like David. And you say, David, like David, bring me the ephod. Bring me the presence of God. And friend, I'm telling you, God will restore you. God will replenish you. God will bring a renewed spirit in your life if you'll call upon him. Again, Thank you for worshiping with us this morning at First Baptist Church of Bemis. And again, I, I want you to know that God's in control of all of this. God is in control of it all. I want to lead you in a word of prayer. And I want to encourage you. Let God have your tragedy. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, thank you for the very precious name of Jesus. Thank you that you are a miracle working God. Thank you, Lord, that what you did for David, you can do for us. And Father, today, I pray for those who are watching who know you not. I pray, Lord, for those who are lost, that today, right now, they'll give their heart to you and be saved. And Father, today, for those who are watching, Lord, who need you to repair the hurt, for those, Father, who are watching, Lord, that you, Father, need to wipe the tears from their face. Lord, help them to look up from whence cometh their help and find strength and courage in you. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the name of Jesus. In Christ's name I pray and amen. Again, have a wonderful day and always know that the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. Have a good day, and God bless you.